you know, one of the things that's come up with the uh, Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act, uh, you know, out of China and other, you know, anti-slavery type of initiatives that are going on, people are looking at it going, you know, well, who should I source or where, you know, if I need to change my sources away from China and whatnot, um, obviously we have a, uh, a big trading partner next door, if you will, to, uh, the South of us is in with Mexico. So we're going to get to talk to somebody that seems to have some expertise in this, but, um, Lala, won't you bring a, you know, introduce our guests and let's bring them on. Yes. So, um, not only is it a good trading partner, but uh, as you remember, uh, it, it recently became the number one trading partner for the U.S. Uh, bypassing China. So with Mexico. So uh, in in trying to, you know, find a lot more resources for for our audience and, and listening to our audience, uh, I reached out to uh, his name is Alberto Villarreal. He started in Nepanoa. Yes, perfect. Nepanoa. OK, yes. <laughs> Nepanoa. Yes. And so. Um, I'm we'll, glad we'll you're about, saying that because I'm the, I, I, my tongue won't go that way. <laughs> Andy, let's try it right now. Nepa Noah, you, you can do Nepa, it. Nepa Noah, okay. And Andy, you did a great job pronouncing it. There you go. <laughs> Nepa Noah is a word in Nahuatl. Nahuatl was the language of the Aztecs. It was the most ah, okay. In the pre-Columbian era, and Nepa Noah means to accompany, to be a companion, to be a guide. And that's exactly what we do. We accompany businesses through important projects of growth, transformation in the U.S. and Mexico. And the Lalo, I'm going to warn you, I'm one of the luckiest guys you will ever meet. And um, I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky for two things. I have a fantastic team that works with me. We have people in Guadalajara, Mexico City, Monterrey, Houston, Austin, New York. And I'm very lucky because we have tremendous clients that over the last four years have really trusted us. Um, but it's important problems and projects, and and and, and we continue to to deliver. So I'm having the time of my life uh, leaving Nepano. Well, I will say, from a personal perspective, I love the Guadalajara area. Is uh, I've had the privilege of going down there a few times, and the amount of manufacturing going on in the Guadalajara area is astronomical. I was just blown away. I noticed that in some of these industrial parks, you will have, you know, a, a, a very large park and you will have what would look like a big warehouse or some of them be some factories in there, distribution centers for pick and pack and whatever. And so they, they have these big areas, but in the middle, there was this most pristine uh, uh, field with the most beautiful grass and all that. Like, What's the yeah. deal with this? <laughs> soccer. They all have soccer teams and they compete against each other. And it is so fantastic. So I had the, the privilege well, of getting to watch some of that. In the, um, in, in the days that I used to sell and, and uh, run around all over Mexico for, to sell my software, that was around, you know, that was many years ago, but anyway, I know that workers in certain factories were recruited for their <laughs> <Yes>. software abilities. <laughs> no, they literally were, you know, this ringers. Like, can you sweep? Yeah. Can you sweep? Yeah, I can sweep. Okay. You're going to sweep, but you're actually my, you're, you're my, you're, you're my forward. You're my goalie. <laughs> you're my midfielder or whatever. <laughs> but they yeah. would literally yeah. recruit because there's nothing more. Um, prestigious or proud than when you walk into that lobby oh. and you see the big trophies oh, of yes. what they want, right? <laughs> exactly. What it all comes down to is, is the culture, right? So when we work with companies that are establishing operations in Mexico, one of the first questions that we ask is, okay, but what do you want your culture to be? This is how the culture looks like in Mexico. And we share similar stories as the ones that, that, you're, that, you're, that you're stating right now, right? It's like, hey, you really want your facility to have a space, a recreational space, which is something that simply doesn't exist in manufacturing facilities in the United States, right? It's the big box and then that's it. But then when you go to Mexico, it's like, hey, what's up with this beautiful field or the grill area with a little palapa on the back, right? You know, and, and, that, that, and that's important. That's part of building a successful culture for your business. It is. Oh, and, and, and it actually, it helps. Uh, 
cut down on the uh, well it helps improve the retention of the employees in other words the the uh, uh people are if they're happy where they work they just keep on with it and they go from there so i mean Andy, in, in mexico you, for manufacturing and of course it varies by industry but but in general you should expect a 60 percent increase in retention versus the united states so you have a factory in the united a roto molding or a plastic injection company or and, and and you have your factory in Mexico, you will experience a 60% less turnover in the in Mexico than you would in the United States. Fantastic. All right. So what do you see as far as the trends right now between, you know, U.S.-Mexico uh, trade relations and, you know, where's the opportunity right now that you see? Oh, absolutely, Andy. So, of course, the very the, the, the most important opportunity and that is being capital, capitalized already is it's in the auto industry, right? When you look at the trade between both countries, auto is, is is really you know leading the way, and that one you also have medical instruments, right? Medical instrument, it, but it's important to understand why. When you look at medical industries and when you look at an automobile, you're really looking at the same materials, Andy. You're looking at the same type of you're looking at plastics, you're looking at metals. So think of the people that you use in both industries, and it, it, it's they're easily interchange, they're easily interchangeable. Right now, when you get into R and D and technology, that's different. But the actual manufacturing of the products—that's what it is. Of course, you have agro products, which it's a super mature industry between U.S. and Mexico. That, that's what we trade the most on a daily basis. Right? Big opportunities that we're seeing right now, particularly in logistics. Why? Because we have this influx of foreign direct investment coming into Mexico, new companies going into the country, and they are selling intra Mexico and also into the United States, right? So that increases the need for logistics, logistics infrastructure, and logistics companies to provide service. Alberto, what about all right now? Is as far as the trends we were talking about that you know, like you said, the automotive, medical devices, and whatnot. If I am a U.S. company and I'm looking at trying to change my source away from, let's say, China in this particular case or any other company a country excuse me around the world <clears throat> and I'm interested in the U, or in Mexico what should I do how how do, how do I investigate that or what do I need to do to to check that out one of the biggest risks that that Mexico faces today is is informality okay and, and what do I mean by informality um, Mexico's economy is highly informal is highly cash basis and that applies to everything that applies to manufacturing that applies to the tacos that you eat on the street, but it also applies to professional services. So they are there are very sophisticated, formal, professional companies like mine that can guide you know these companies through their Mexico journey. You need the first point to understand is that Mexico is 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 comprised of 32 states. Okay, sometimes when we think of Mexico, we just think of Mexico, right? You understand that that that, that Mexico and these are the Bajas, you know, the country, and then you have the Gulf over here, right? So it's not the same to establish an operation in Monterrey than to establish an operation in Mérida. Now, if your business is suitable for Mérida, then by all accounts, go to Mérida or go to Baja or go to. But that's the first step. The first step is okay. Where do I need to be? Where are my clients? How will my supply chain work? Because if it's 32 states and I'm receiving all my raw materials from Asia, maybe I want to be at the Pacific and then closer to the border, right? Maybe you don't care. Maybe you can come to the Pacific, put it on rail, send it all the way to the northern part, and then and then to to the to the to the to the, to the eastern side of the United States, right? So it's where your clients, how will your supply chain look? And also, what type of people do you need? Similar to what happens in the United States, where the, the qualifications that you will find in California are not the same than the qualifications that you will find in New York. The same thing happens in Mexico, right? What type of people do you need? What skills are you looking for? How much cost? And finally, let's talk about real estate. How much land do you need? Are you okay with any facility? Do you need a build to suit? What are your utilities needs? Do your processes require a lot of water? How many KVAs do you need to maintain your operation running? What about gas? So you put all those factors in a bucket and you make a case for change. 
Well, but that's that's the point of having somebody to help. Na- help you know, you know how to navigate, if you will, the bureaucracy within you know Mexico and all that. And that's where I was going when I was talking about zeroing in. Yeah, definitely. You you start with a project. Here's what I'm trying to accomplish, and let the expert give you guidance on. Here's the recommendations. Here's where you go. You work through that. And then take them with you to go down there or have them set it up. I mean, that I agree with that 100%. That's what you call, hey, the network of doing business in Mexico. And, and you mentioned something very important. You, you, you mentioned the word together, going together. And that is, right, it, it's about collaboration. I will never claim that I know one of my clients' business better than they do. Right? But my company, we do know Mexico. Right. And our job is, is to avoid Mexico moments. And what's a Mexico moment is the government not getting back to you in three weeks when they told you it was going to be two. It's not being able to open a bank account. Is someone trying to get you to sign a lease in, in a, in a park that doesn't have the KVAs that you need for your facility. That's a Mexico moment. Right? So we, we live off of, of, of navigating those risks and making sure that the, the things go well, but it's together. It's in collaboration. We have to do it together. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's what it is guys. And and it's something very important guys. It's, I mentioned the government a little bit, um, something very interesting that the Mexico government did is that at the federal level, there's not a communicated strategy for the country for, for foreign direct investment. So what's happening is that they're letting the 32 states go after companies and, and attract them. Right. So that's why you have Nuevo León, Jalisco, Querétaro, San Luis, Chihuahua, the usual suspects one. Right. But where I'm going with this is I have been amazed that in the last four years, especially the secretaries of economic development of particular states have been tremendously active, traveling, going after companies, you know, to to attract them into and to being able to 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 facilitate doing business in their states. And that's something that hadn't happened before. Um, and, 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 and that is. That is key. We're actually bringing in June, uh, we're doing a Mexico expansion summit, uh, here in Chicago. We, we, we're sponsoring it. Nepa is, we, we're organizing it and we're bringing the secretary of economy of Jalisco, of Nuevo Leon and Baja California, right? So three of the secretaries of economy, they're coming to Chicago. That, that just didn't happen before, right? And now they're coming to Chicago to meet with companies and be like, all right, guys, here we are. Well, what do you need? What, what, what can we answer for you? 